Oh, hi there! It's Sam here with your usual MTO special. I think I missed the day yesterday, but that's beside the point. Okay, so how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at these guys. Look at this cute, cute baby. Cute, annoying babies. Yes. So, um, as you notice, this baby doesn't look too happy. So, today we're going to ask the question how? Well, not really how, but why? Why do babies make so much noise? Because, you know, think about it. Back in the day, when the predators like this icy dire wolf, you know, predators abounding everywhere, bloodthirst. Yeah, um, you know, it might not be so advantageous to be wailing, especially in the middle of the night, you know, when your parents are trying to sleep. You know, easy, easy. Right, so, why? Why do human babies, specifically, if you think about it, if you think about it, most other animals don't, don't cry in the middle of the night, right? Do you hear the baby birds crying in the middle of the night? No, they cry in the morning, right? When they're hungry for food. But human babies, strangely, will cry basically all the, all the time. All right. So, yeah. Luckily, I'm not speaking from personal experience. But, uh, yes, I'm sure all you new parents out there can attest to this, this phenomenon. So, let's answer that question. Why? Why do they cry so much? So, in order to do that, we gotta go back. Back to ancient times. So, firstly, back in the day, you know, uh, let's say 25,000 years ago, you know, when they were Neanderthals. You know. Happy Neanderthals. Yes, that's right. So, you know, you think, you think caveman, you think uh, they're wearing some leopard skin, and they got some, some lousy stone spear. Yeah, how's that? How's that for a stereotypical caveman? All right, Flintstone style. Okay, very hairy. You know, thick set, but mostly happy. Okay, right. So, imagine that this guy has a baby. Hi, baby. Oh, not by himself, you know, obviously he's his female counterpart. But yeah, here's a baby. A little, little baby. Spunky baby. Baby girl. Because they have bow ties back then. Okay? So, now, if you think about it. Think about it. So, presumably, this baby would make a lot of noise. Right? But, in this day and age, Comparatively, so this is from accounts, okay? Because obviously there's not a lot of uh, it's not a lot of physical evidence, which is what archaeologists you know use to uh, make their assumptions. You know things that are left behind, you know, in the dirt, you know, like things like bones, you know. So there's not a lot of that for babies. Um, but yes, one of the things, one of the reasons that um, historians would believe that babies didn't cry as much back in the day was because of the nature of the culture back then so okay so imagine you know the moms neanderthal moms with the beard you know so firstly because of the the nature of their lifestyle they would travel a lot or they would travel but they would forage okay so both uh, parties would probably you know mom and dad would probably be on the move quite a bit okay so they would bring the child along with them Okay, so they'll strap them in, okay, and they will walk around. So in cultures, uh, even to this day, you know, uh, cultures that you know we consider not so uh, advanced or whatever, uh, they will bring their kids around with them, you know, all day. You know, when they go to the market, they go do some shopping, when they go to work, you know, they'll just have their baby saddled up, okay. So because of that movement, uh, the baby actually is more, uh, you know, I guess calm, okay. So if you notice when you when you, when you want to calm a baby down, what do you do? You know, you, you pick it up, right? You pick the pick the little little brat up, and you like you give it a little swaddle, right? 
give a little you know, jump, jumpy thing, whatever. I don't know what, what parents do, but uh, basically, you know, a, a bit of constant motion uh, puts the baby at, at ease. Okay, so um, that's one of the reasons that they cite. Okay, so parents always on the move, and even if they're not on the move, say the parents parents are away, you know, fighting a war or whatever, you know, Neanderthal wars. You know, so the parents are busy foraging, you know, during the day. You know, I'm, not, I'm joking about the war. Um, yeah, they're, you know, they're out doing the work, you know, mom's away, dad's away, uh, you know, hunting and whatnot, all right? So, of course, they would, they, would leave, they would leave the baby with somebody, right? Which is most likely, you know, the, the grandma or grandpa, right? So they would have to be the, the nene, right? Opa-san. Okay, so you know, Nene will look after the baby while she's you know cooking up stuff. Okay, so this leads me to another point, which is, I mean, yes, in this day and age, you know, um, maybe in the Asian cultures, we still have uh, you know uh, our, the parents, grandparents to look after the kids, uh, but maybe not in you know maybe not so much in Western cultures, you know, where it's just the parents. So of course, when the parents are away and the baby's you know, not, not so attended to, doesn't feel attention, baby starts to cry, right? Wah, wah. Okay, but if Nene is around, eh, it's not so bad. Okay, so that leads to the next point. Okay, so say the baby, you know, st so the baby's still gonna cry, right? So it's gonna cry in the middle of the night. Wah, wah. Okay, so when the baby cries, okay, baby's wailing, baby's not happy, wah. okay. So, even if a bloodthirsty predator were to hear, okay, you will hear the cries of the baby, this poor, defenseless, innocent, annoying baby, okay, even if you were to hear it and attempt to come and eat this, you know, defenseless meal, easy meal, he would probably have to get through, you know, at least like, like 10, 15 people, right? Because humans have always been herd animals, okay? So uh, even back in the Neanderthal days, uh, the campsites, you know, the, the cave dwellers, they, was, they, weren't, they weren't solo, you know, they weren't, they weren't just one or two people. They were, they were, you know, at least a good 10, 20 people strong, right? And even if, even if by some, some chance this predator risked their life and limb to eat the baby, there would be vengeance, right? You know, humans, very vengeful. They would, of course, hunt this damn thing down, you know, make sure that there is no trace left of the entire wolf family, okay? Right, so very unlikely that predators would uh, risk going into a human camp, right? They would rather just pick off poor defenseless child or a, not a child maybe it's like a you know a young defenseless child out in the woods by himself or herself right much easier than trying to go into a, you know a camp or a cave you know somewhere where there are potentially a lot of people right a lot of people because you know humans uh, you know despite uh, not, not being the apex predators that we are you know we're soft and squishy uh, but you know I, th I think I think we, we could we could hold our own at least you know adults can hold their own okay so there you go there's another reason but still that leads us to the main question that we haven't answered yet right which is why the bloody hell are they so noisy and why do they still cry right well the, the simple reason is that it works okay so clearly, if evolution has kept this trait in babies, right, it means it's doing something right. So the, the, the pros outweigh the cons, right? Definitely, okay? So the, the cons which would be, you know, get eaten by a predator, which is relatively unlikely, right? Because it's got so much protection. It's always got someone, you know, a baby is not going to be left unattended. You know, unless the parent is particularly neglect, 
negligent. Negligent. Think about that word there. Okay. Um, but yes, the pros are that a baby uh, that cries for attention has a higher chance of survival. Simple as that. Okay. So the baby that cries survives. Okay. There you go. So you know. Um, it just, it's just unfortunate that I guess babies these days have been kind of conditioned to cry a little bit more just because maybe they feel they're not getting the attention as much or, you know, I don't know, bad parenting. I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, it's a different, different age, different culture. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, I mean, there, there is another darker point that I'm not getting into, which is that, uh, you know, back in the day, a lot of a lot of babies died. <laughs> you know, baby mortality was a was a thing. You know, I'm not saying that like the like babies didn't die. So presumably the ones that didn't make noise actually died, right? So the ones that didn't cry out for their parents, you know, maybe the parents forgot about them. You know, left them in the left them in the tub. You see, if you think about it, the, the like uh, baby mortality actually uh, there are many other reasons why why babies might not survive, right? And being eaten by predators is probably not as high up on the list as you think, right? There are plenty of, of other issues that, you know, could, uh, could cause the untimely demise of a poor baby, okay? So, uh, you know, probably things like disease, you know, disease, you know, like, like this, this annoying disease thing, all right? Disease, starvation, right? That's probably another thing, you know, no, no food. No, no tasty, no tasty chicken, All right? Okay, starvation. You know, these, these are these are probably, uh, you know, more pressing matters back in the day. So, you know, in this current day and age, uh, where we've done away with some of that, you know, um, so it's overall not so bad. So I guess the baby has kept the crying thing, and the crying thing works. So they keep doing it, okay? Because you know, like I said. The baby that cries survives. All right. So um, yeah, there you go. Uh, and I guess um, before I before I leave, I guess uh, let's I throw in a random phrase of the day. So uh, yes, let's, let's try let's try a different brush. Okay. So uh, we're gonna learn some Korean. How's that? How's that sound? Yeah. Oh, bigger, bigger brush. All right. Let's go with this one. So it's. What is this? This is g sound. G, g. G jo. Same one. G. What's this one? What's this one. The reverse S. It's an it's an L or R sound. L or R. And this. So the H. Is, is actually uh, is actually like an A and E combined, so it's A. Okay. So let's go through together. G, G, Jo, G, Jo, G, Re. Okay, what does that mean? It means so so. Okay. So you what put in a sentence? You say something like. Uh, 나는 그저 그렇게 지냈어. Okay, it means I'm doing so so. I'm so so. So this you know, it will be in response to if someone would ask you, you know, 어떻게 지내요? 어떻게 지내세요? Which is how are you? If you know, you can ask you something like 뭐해? 뭐해요? So it's more polite. Huh? Okay, and you go something like 나는 그저 그렇게 지내요. Yeah, 지내세요. Okay, that just means I'm I'm doing I'm doing okay. So. Alright. You're welcome. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all for me. I hope you guys have a good typusum. I just remembered it is uh, it is typusum tomorrow. So uh, yeah, public holiday, how about that? So yeah, have a happy typusum everybody. And uh, I will I will see you when I see you. Hey! Hey! There's Sam in Taibuzum! Oh yeah! Well, that's me for now. Alright, have a good holiday. Sam out!